All right, everyone, this is Tim of Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, my head hurts. That was, that was an interesting game yesterday, you know? And like they still say, defense wins championships, and Tampa proved that. And everyone knows I have an affinity for Tampa Bay considering that I work there, and I actually worked there the season after the first Super Bowl. And I was there for the two losing seasons before they went back to having a winning season. So I'm very glad that I'm very happy for Tampa. Happy for Tom Brady. It's one of those things that um, was it Belichick now or was it Brady that's responsible for all those championships in uh, New England? Oh, boy. You know, I drank a little too much that last night. <laughs> that's, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, uh, I don't know. My my head just, my head just hurts today. But I wanted to talk about that. You know, now that the season is over, we can talk about free agents. We can talk about the draft. We could talk about who we should sign and who we shouldn't sign. And the wide receiver position, of course, is going to be the position of need for the New York Giants, and either via the draft or, of course, free agency. Michael Irvin came out and said, "The Giants need to send uh, Kenny Galladay." And I, I, I have no problem with Kenny. You know, they call him ba- Baby Megatron. You know, he is a good, very good wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. I mean, he's, what is he, 6'4", 214, 215 pounds. Um, he, he plays, you know, he's got the speed to stretch the, sp- the field. He plays well in space. He's not afraid to go over the middle. He has had some injury issues. I mean, um, out of a possible 64 games, he's only played in 47. I mean, so that that's that's a little bit of concern. You know, he missed four games his rookie season, one game his second season. He played 16, uh, all 16 in 2019. And then, of course, he had the hamstring and the hip issue and missed 11 games in 2020. And some people are saying that he didn't want to come back because of injury. I mean, he didn't want to risk injury. And I don't buy that. I, you know, you're a professional. I, I wouldn't say that some players didn't tank, but, you know, I wouldn't, you know, you know, turn it off because of the injury. But I don't buy that. I think if he could have come back and played, he would have came back and played. But the question is, I don't think this is the guy the Giants should sign. He already allegedly turned down $17 million a season at the beginning of the year for Detroit. So you know he's looking for he's looking for that big money push. I mean, if that if that rumor is true, so what is he looking for? Nineteen, twenty million dollars? I'm sorry if you potentially could have played in sixty four games and you played in forty seven. I'm not I'm not impressed with that. Yeah, you're a big target, but you're also going to be twenty seven years old. He came in at a later age into the league. He came in at 24 years old. When most guys are coming into the league at 20, 21, 22, this guy came in at 24 years old. So if you you sign him to a five-year contract, let's say, by the time you get to year five, he's going to be 32 years old. And that's that's an issue for me. I, I don't like that. Yeah, is he the big target Daniel Jones needs? Sure. Is he has the speed to stretch the field and open up the holes for Saquon Barkley? Sure, 100%. But I don't see him as a potential fit if he can't stay on the field. Think about it, though. 64 total games he could have played in, and he played in 47. I'm not saying that he is injury-prone. All I'm saying is that that has to be a concern for a guy that you are going to give a lot of money to. And then, honestly, if you look at his catch percentage, which is the percentage of the times he catches the ball from the amount of times that it was thrown to him, you're looking at a guy with a 58% catch percentage. That means he catches the ball 58% of the time. His highlight was last year, which was 2000. I can say last year now, which is 2020. At 62.5. So I'm not overly impressed with that catch percentage either. And he's got 21 touchdowns in four seasons, and 11 of those touchdowns came in 19. And he played in the Dome with Matthew Stafford. So I'm not breaking the bank for this guy, where he's going to have to play outside. Yeah, I know he played at school in what did he play, Northern Illinois. So he played outside. But his, his most of his numbers and his big games came within the dome. 
So I can't see taking that risk. Now, one of the things that I, one of the players I would take a risk on, and I don't think it's a risk, it's going to be Chris Godwin of Tampa Bay, the champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chris has played in a total of 58 games out of 64. He, they, Him and Kenny came in the league at the same time. Chris is 24 years old. And if you take a look at it statistically, Chris has got 300, excuse me, 224 receptions for 3,540 yards. And if you take a look at our old buddy Kenny, he's got 183 receptions for 3,068 yards. So, I mean, they're, they're very similar in reference to, I mean, Chris has got 24 touchdowns, Kenny's got 21. But to me, Chris has more of an upside for the Giants because, like I said, he is only 24 years old. He plays outside in Tampa. He had to play with Jameis Winston. He had to relearn a quarterback with Tom Brady. And then I also have to add in the fact that you had, of course, Gronkowski come in, Mike Evans, who's been there along with Chris, and then you add in Antonio Brown. And what's his name? The other, the other tight end. So he was never really the first option this year. He was more the first option in 19, where we had 86 catches for 1,330 yards, 33 yards, and nine touchdowns. He was more of a first option. But what really gets me about Chris, when you throw him the ball, he catches it. His catch percentage is 68.7. The last two years, in 2020, he was 77.4%. And this year, oh, I don't know why the music's queuing in way too early right there. But like I said, if you take a look at his year right now, his catch percentage was 77.4. In 19, it was 71.1. That means 71% of the time, 77% of the time, you throw him the ball, he's going to catch it. That, to me, and he's not that much smaller than Kenny. He's 6'1", 210. So he's three inches smaller. He's still a big target. He's still he's still a guy. He's still a he's still a burner. I also like him because he's a Philly guy. Yeah, and of course Philly and New York. Yeah, I understand that. But he's a Philly guy. He he is a Philly guy. So he's not too far from New York. He also, of course, went to college at Penn State. He knows how to play in the Northeast. Yes, I know you're gonna say, well, he, uh, Kenny played in Chicago. Yeah, there's a difference between playing at Northern Illinois and Penn State. If I'm going to drop a load of cash on a wide receiver and I have a choice between these two, I'm going Chris Godwin twice on Sunday. Because of the fact that, like I said, he has, to me, he's more what the Giants are looking for. He's going to be, he's a little bit more durable. He has the game-changing speed. He has the ability to make all the catches. He has that ability to get open, and when he gets open and he gets separation, he catches the ball. I mean, you think about it. Kenny's career catch percentage is 58.1, and Chris Godwin's is 68.7. One played in the Dome, one played in the Swamp in Tampa. So who, who would you rather have? Now, the issue with all of this is I think it's all going to be moot because of the fact that Kenny has said back in December he would prefer to stay in Detroit. And, of course, it's all, it's all going to be about the money. But he would prefer to stay back in Detroit. He said in December. He came out in a couple articles and said it. He may have turned down the contract because so he's probably looking to try to get more money. The other issue is the Lions can just slap the tag on him. We saw how that happens with Yannick Ngagwe. Now, the same thing with Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin has just won a Super Bowl in Tampa. Will they be able to keep the, you know, will they be able to keep the band together? I don't know. But it's the same thing. If Tampa really wants to keep Chris and Chris wants to stay with Tampa, if you want, if Tom Brady comes back and they think they can make another run, they're just going to slap the tag on him. So we can dream all we want about Godwin and Kenny. But the problem is, more than likely, each of these teams, are if they cannot sign them to a long-term contract, or just going to slap the tag on them, franchise tag on them. Sort of like kind of what we did with uh, Leonard Williams. 
and see what happens for that one year. I mean, we need to look at someone who's truly going to be a free agent, you know, someone that, you know, we could truly go after. And then the fact you need to figure this out, and this is why I keep saying that if we should go wide receiver second round, because of the fact that you may only have anywhere between 30, let's say we have anywhere between 38 and $40 million, if not more than that, because, you know, we don't know exactly what the cap's going to be. You signed Leonard Williams to $20 million. You know, you've taken a large chunk. People, I, I don't understand why people don't think about this sometimes. Leonard Williams' contract is not on the books. So that money we have is part of Leonard Williams' money. So, I mean, we're going to need money to sign him. Where are you going to get that money from? Hmm. Huh, it's going to be the free agent number. Plus the fact that we have to make sure that we have enough for the rookie for the rookie contracts. So we're not going to be able to go out and sign Leonard Williams for 20 something million dollars and then go give 16, 17 million dollars to a wide receiver. But like I said, if I was going to give the money to wide receiver, it's going to be Chris Godwin. Not that I'm not saying Kenny's not a good player. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's not going to be a good, would not be a fantastic giant. All I'm saying is for the money, Chris Godwin will catch the ball. He will get open. We'll make the big plays. We'll do what needs to be done for Daniel Jones. And he will give him the target that's lacking, and he will stay on the field. And when you throw him the ball, he would catch it. When there's a 10% difference in catch percentage, I get very worried about that. And when your best season, like I said, is 62%, and the other guy's best season is, is – 77. The guy, Kenny, uh, Chris Godwin's worst catch percentage was 61.8%. <laughs> Kenny's worst catch percentage was, let's see, was 58. And he had two seasons, of, oh, no, I'm sorry, 56. And that, and that 56 was during his big year in 19. And like I said, I'm not going to drop this money on a 27 year old when I can drop this money on a 24 year old. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giant sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you ring that blazing, you know what it means? That'd be awesome.